Today we have visited Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Barbados. Uh, this is for us a very important operation. We have an extended loan for improving a hospital that uh, serves all this population and uh, that's where we can see the impact of uh, EU funds can have when uh, uh, driven through the biggest and the largest needs of the population. This is a great hospital with a very encouraging people and the executive director has drove us through the hospital explaining the new investment plans, the new ambition for the future of Barbados. Then we have various rooms for the nursing and the different members of the team, um, staff, lunchroom. This is really the um, space uh, that I was mentioning that is our recovery space. This is currently also being used by our accident and emergency department for stabilizing their patients, this in the back area here. Um, but they have um, two bedded unit here. They have another four beds here and another four beds in the back, all recovery space. This is where we need to have um, dedicated nursing staff for this space as well. But when we are finished with third floor lines, we expect the space to look similar to this, where they will have a recovery space, but their recovery space will not be as complex as this one, because they have a lot of ambulatory cases. So they, will, yeah. so they don't have a lot of patients that will be on beds, and they'll have a much faster turnover of patients um, that they will be doing. Yeah. So, so this is our accident and emergency. And this is um, relatively, this is um, about 15 months old. We have to be careful because they're actually doing some work here. Um, we have actually relocated our accident and emergency so that we can do some refurbishment and some touching up to keep the space fresh. And we wanted to do some additional work on the floor. Um, so the guys are doing some painting and just freshening up the space. And um, so, this uh, is very heavily trafficked and because we are waiting for the phase three to complete, we find that there is excess um, traffic in here. Uh, COVID was, a, a, as you all know, a once in a lifetime um, international occurrence. And as a country, we had to grapple with um, resourcing this national response. The European Union came to our assistance in very real, significant and substantive ways. They were able to assist us to um, expand the amount of resources we had available in our national basket by providing equipment and resources, not just here at the hospital, but at our isolation center in the north of the island. What was so important about this engagement with the European Union is that it was strategic. It was backward looking, helping to assist and support some of the costs that we were carrying, but it was also forward looking and recognizing that the hospital need to be made resilient to the kinds of shocks of this nature that it, we would have been impacted by. So we would have received equipment, we would have received support for um, infrastructure building out, and for key um, investments that allowed us to become the international shining light in this response. Okay, uh, we certainly want to thank the European Investment Bank for all the support that they have given us. Uh, certainly the loan proceeds as negotiated has helped us during, especially during the COVID period. It has helped us with the PPP and also outfitting and retrofitting operations within the communities in the hospital and also our Harsons Point, which was a dedicated facility. Uh, we continue to look forward to the su support of the European Investment Bank in terms of the 50 million, dollar Euro 50 million euros program, uh, for which we've already had a disbursement. There are several exciting projects that we will continue to work with the European Investment Bank on and prom for the promotion and development of our healthcare sector in Barbados. And we really want to extend thanks to the European Investment Bank for all that they have done in Barbados and supporting us, especially during our critical COVID-19 period.